Hi guys, I hope uh, you're able to see it clearly and the volume is fine and all that. I'm just uh, going to check this out for, uh, for 40 seconds, 30 seconds, and then jump into the session after that. And so we're going to do a session on, uh, on geometry, very wonderfully uh, interesting topic. Uh, it's a fabulous topic, one of my favorites, because it, uh, this, the scope is vast. Uh, and it's, a, it's an important topic because uh, it sets the base for trigonometry, mensuration, coordinate geometry. And geometry, trigonometry, mensuration, quadrate geometry can utterly dominate a competitive exam. So it's, a, it's, a, it's an important topic to get a handle on. It's a well-tested topic uh, because they, they historically the examiners have managed to select a beautiful question from this question that can be done well in a minute, minute and a half if you know your stuff. And you can go on a proper classic wild goose chase if you don't know your stuff. It's a topic where if you learn the basics relentlessly well, it pays off. Right? You need to get lots of practice and learn iteratively. It's also a topic that is non-linear. What do I mean by that? In a great many topics, you plug in a three or four formulas into it, you put in a one template, you'll get it right. There's no average sum of numbers by two. The method is a given, and then it sits on how you execute it. In geometry, there is a question, and then there's a toolkit. The tougher part is not applying the toolkit. The tougher part is finding out which one to set. So the guys, if they know that similarity is being involved, they'll know what similarity to plug in, where to look for. But if you look at a question, the best guys will tell you, ah, similarity, congruence, basic proportionality theorem, angle by sector theorem. And then that starting point that the best guys can, can think of immediately, that is, the, that is the magic bullet in this, where you need to look at a question and go, Oh, I have to take this part of the toolkit and plug it there. That's the tougher part. That comes with a, uh, with a with sufficient practice. You need to know all the basics. You need to cover all the theory. You need to know the fundamentals, And then you need to get lots of practice by up for applying this fundamentals. The first iteration is going to be take a funda, apply it, get, where you, get, get the value from it. The second iteration is when you do open-ended questions, where you are not being told, use congruence and solve this question use similarity and solve this question. You're not being told that. You have to figure out what idea to apply in which question. That's a tougher part. And, so, and one, if you crack that and you become better and better at that, then you're good to go. And that is that is the point we'll be focusing on here, where we'll, we'll spend a uh, lot of uh, time trying to say, how do you figure out what to apply? Uh, I'm going to I'm going to start off by by sharing the screen and then and then do our typical style where we post a question give maybe a couple of minutes and then discuss that and then, and then talk about it. I've been seeing some complaints on uh, on uh, brightness is too much and video is puffing. Brightness is too much because I, I didn't pick the right shot. I'm so sorry about that. Uh, the the buffering issue and brightness issue will go away the moment we start sharing the screen. We don't care about the person we care about the geometry and so we'll jump in and solve some questions. So. After that, you don't have to put up with this uh, really bright radish. Super. Let's go here and then share this. And we'll put to go. I hope you guys are able to still see this, uh, hear me clearly, and see the screen. Uh, we're going to solve this question. Uh, I'm going to give you about two minutes, and then you can try this out. In those two minutes, I'm going to fill the time by just 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 rattling on about this and that, and maybe give some context for the questions. Okay, so, uh, x, y, z are integers that are sides of an obtuse angle triangle. If x, y equal to 4, find z. And should be integers and not integer. x, y, z are integers that are side of an obtuse angle triangle. If x into y is equal to 4, find z. Wonderful question. Uh, it's a classic combination of uh, number systems. Inequalities in geometry, who would have thunk? But you can find all three in one go. This is predominantly geometry, I'm kidding. But you use a little bit of those two other ideas as well. Right? What should you know in order to be able to try this question? One little bit of funda. We all know Pythagoras theorem. You, know, you have three sides of a triangle, A, B, and C, with C being the longest side. Then this is Pythagoras theorem working for right angle triangles. Where C is the hypotenuse, A square plus B square equal to C square. Pythagoras of Samos, he, he made this and owned this theorem. Uh, he's Greek, of course. Uh, but the theory is the Egyptians knew this uh, probably 
before Pythagoras. Pythagoras discovered this in a bunch of other theorems and traveled around the world to propagate his idea of uh, math being not just propagate his idea, just to know about the thought leaders and about math. And he was uh, very surprised by how some of the other civilizations and cultures already knew a bunch of ideas which he thought was uh, phenomenally brilliant. Right? Like Pythagoras theorem. Pythagoras theorem was used in Egyptian buildings um, way before Pythagoras actually came up with it. Right? So, anyway, enough of uh, mathematical history. Let's go about this. A square plus B square equal to C square for right angle triangle. A square plus B square will be less than C square for an obtuse angle triangle. And A square plus B square will be greater than C square for an acute angle triangle. More precisely, a square plus b square will be less than c square if c is up to sign it, angle c, angle opposite c. a square plus b square will be greater than c square if c is an acute angle. So for an acute angle triangle, all three relations will work. For an obtuse angle triangle, a, b, c. For one, it will be like this, a square plus b square less than c square. So if you take the longest side to be c, there's a quite beautiful, quick and dirty way of finding whether given triangle is acute, obtuse or right angle. Given any triangle, take the longest side, square them, take the two shorter squares, square them and add them. If the sum is equal to that, it's a right angle. The sum is less than that, it's an obtuse angle. The sum is greater than that, it's an acute angle triangle. Okay? Brilliant. So that is the funda, that is the geometry angle of the funda that we have to use. But the starting step for this question is number systems, plain vanilla number systems. X and Y are integers, X, Y equal to 4. Completely forget geometry. Two integers multiply to give us 4. Two positive integers. Okay. Think about that and start from there for this question. For a second, I thought about just just shifting the screen and, uh, and browsing something. I can't work on a screen share basis. Right, so carry on. I'm going to just wait for, for, for 30, 45 more seconds. And then we'll discuss the solution for this. X, Y, Z are integers. that are sides of an obtuse angle triangle. X into Y is 4 times Z. I'm going to put obtuse angle triangle. Start with X into Y is 4. X into Y is 4. What could X and Y be? They could be 1 and 4. Or two and two. The third side is also an integer. So it could be 1, 4, 1, 1, 4, 2, 1, 4, 3, 1, 4, 4, 1, 4, 5, 1, 4, 6, any of this. Or 2, 2, 1, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 3, 2, 2, 4, 2, 2, 5, any of these. I'm saying any of these for a reason. I'm saying any of these so that you can jump out and say not any of these. All of these won't be triangles, only a few will be triangles. Okay, let me just stop find that those out. One, four, one, not a triangle. Sum of two sides has to be greater than the third side. One, four, two doesn't work. One plus two is less than four. One plus three is equal to four, doesn't work. This works. One, four, four. One, four, five doesn't work. One plus four is five. One plus four less than six doesn't work. So the rest won't work. Only one, four, four works. Let's go this side. 2, 2, 1 works. 1 plus 2 is greater than 2. 2 plus 2 is greater than 1. 2, 2, 2, of course, works. An equal triangle. Beautiful. 2, 2, 3. This also works. 2 plus 2 is greater than 3. 2, 2, 4. Doesn't work. Doesn't work. Doesn't work after this. Right? I'm doing these questions at a certain speed. I mean, this, these are tough questions. If you don't know your fun days, you're going to struggle with this. If you know, if you know about acute angle triangle sides, of some of two sides greater than the third side. Uh, all of those. If you are not yet ready for doing these kind of questions, go back to your Geometry 101, learn through them. Geometry 101, Geometry 1 is available for free in the 2IM online course. It's absolutely fabulously well constructed. If you feel that look, this class is fine, but maybe it's a little quick, I'm not yet ready. Snap out of this, run and sign in as a trial user. Just go through the whole class. It has three quizzes and about two hours of uh, teaching material from scratch. And so go through that, learn that, and then come back and hit this. You should be able to have a go at these. Right? So, now, coming back to this, there are only four triangles possible. So I'm going to list those four now. The four triangles that we have shortlisted 1, 4, 4, 2, 2, 1, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 3. 
we have found used x y equal to 4, z being an integer and it being a triangle. The one part we have not used is obtuse angle. Just compare this 1 square plus 4 square compared with 4 square is greater. So, this is an acute angle. 2, 2, 1. 1 square plus 2 square is greater than 2 square. Again, acute angle. 2, 2, 2. Acute angle that we don't have to really check. As an equal angle triangle, 60, 60, 60 are the three angles. Definitely acute angle. 2, 2, 3. 2 square plus 2 square compared to 3 square. 4 plus 4 compared with 9. We have a winner. 2, 2, 3 is an obtuse triangle triangle. All three sides are integers. It's a valid triangle. X into Y is 4. On the final side is 3. Side is 3. One of them. Beautiful question. Uh, I use a bunch of small fundays. But if you know all your basics, you know the exact method of approaching this and finding this out. And so questions like these are, are common. Just a couple of ideas. You know them, put them together. Bang, you have two times. Let's go to the next one. Properly tough question. Again, you need to know a bunch of basics for this. I'm going to assume you know the basics, but I'll rush through the basics one more time in each way. Okay, so read the question. We'll circle back in about 45 seconds to learn the very basics, and then we'll go and hit this question. Super, I'm going to have a go at uh, very basics for square and equal triangle. And these wonderful shapes should know the basics really well. Square, ratio of sides to diagonal, 1 is to 1 is to root 2. And so A, A, A root. That you should know. Very the simple implications of Pythagoras theorem or nice after a right triangle triangle. Equal triangle, there are more fun days to learn. So I'm going to talk about equal triangle in more detail. This you should know. You should know how to derive this. Equal triangle A, B, C, the side where A, 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 we draw an altitude A, D, this will measure root 3 by 2 A, that will also be the median, area is root 3 by 4 A square, all this we know, if you measure a point which is the two thirds point, that will be the centroid in center, ortho center, circum center, everything for an equal triangle, this will be two thirds of root 3 by 2a, which is a by root 3, it will be one third of root 3 by 2a, which is a by 2 root 3. For an equal triangle, circum radius is a by root 3, equal triangle of side a, in radius would be a by 2 root 3. This is found by doing two thirds of root 3 by 2a, this goes off a by root 3. This is doing one third of root 3 by 2a. All of this is not really relevant for this question, but I'm saying you should know all of these fundays. You have woken up in the middle of the night and asked for in radius of an equal triangle of side A. You should know the formula. You should know how to derive it, figure it out. How where do you plug in Pythagoras theorem? Where you use the idea two is to one for centroid and median. All that you should know. But you should say in radius equal triangle of side A, A by two root three. Damn, bang, we're going ahead and doing that. And that is very important. Make sure you know that really well. Now well, let's go to this question itself. 
equal as a triangle is inscribed inside the square such that one side of the triangle is parallel to the diagonal and vertex coincides with the vertex of the square. What is the ratio of a area of equal triangle to that of square? Try this. I'm not going to rush through and give you the answer. Give this a go. Keep trying. The wonderful question. So remember, for this, we know the side of the square to be A. We take the side of the square to be A. If you get side of equal triangle in terms of A, in some form, you're done. You're done straight away. We know the answer immediately after that. And so try that. If you can find that, you're through. It's a tough question, which is why I'm giving a, a longer time window. So give it a go. It's a good question to try. We, we need rejigging this question. We need to find PP in terms of A. We need to find side of the A parallel triangle in terms of side of the square. And then we are through. We can plug in the formula and find the ratio of areas, blah, 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 etc. everything after that. This question is probably significantly tougher than what we see in our exam. It's a good question to practice, nevertheless. I'm going to think about how we can approach this. I'm going to approach this using some trigonometry and then see if we can do a plain vanilla approach as well. Right. Angle ABC is 90. This is 60. These two should be equal. This is 15. This is 15. This side is A. This is 15. So this PP. A B by P B equals cos 15. A B by P B is cos 15. Or P B equals A B by cos 15. Or it is A B by sine 75. You can find sine 75 or you know sine 75, life is good. You can write it as sine of 30 plus 45, simplify that, get that formula, and then you are through. And then you can simply find find that you're not expected to know sine 75 uh, just by this is a tough question not easy we'll do it by a slightly different method at least give you the starting step for that so you can try that out as well i'm going to assume pd is x dq will also be x ap will be a minus x and so ap square plus ab square equals pb square a minus x the whole square plus a square is pb square pq d is an isosceles right angle triangle so pq is root 2x pq square is root 2x the whole square just 2x square we're thinking about this right angle triangle and then this right angle triangle and plugging in pythagoras theorem why are we doing this? Because we know PBQ is an equilateral triangle. All three sides are equal. So we can get equation in terms of sides of the equilateral triangle. We can find an equation for PP and one for PQ. And then say, oh, these two have to be equal. You're good. You're true. And that's what we're shooting for. PB square is A minus X the whole square plus A square. P 
pq squares root 2x the whole square or 2x square or a square minus 2ax plus x square plus a square equals 2x square or 2a square minus 2ax equals x square you want x in terms of a so i'm going to divide by x square throughout and so 2a square by x square minus 2a by x equals 1. We effectively want to find a by x. Okay, so let a by x equal to y. 2y square minus 2y equals 1. Solve this, find y. If we know y, we know a by x is what y is. Once you get that root, there too. And so area of the square is a square. Area of the equilateral triangle is root 3 by 4 x square. What is the ratio of the area of equilateral triangle to that of the square? This is root 3 by 4 x square by a square. If you find a by x or x by a, we are through. We've got this far. All we need to do is solve this quadratic equation and we are through. And so, I'm going to go over this whole process again and then get the method clearly nailed on and then go on to the mechanics. We call this as a minus x, so this will be x. This is x, therefore, this is a minus x. We are finding BP using the right angle triangle PAP. A square plus a minus x whole square is BP square. We are finding PQ using this isosceles right angle triangle. PQ is parallel to the diagonal. So PQD will be an isosceles right angle triangle. This is x, this is x, this will be root 2x. Right, so PQ square is 2x square. And we know that PB square is a square plus a minus x whole square. So a square minus 2ax plus x square plus a square is 2x square. PB square is equal to PQ square. Or 2a square minus 2ax equals x square. 2a square by x square minus 2a by x equal to 1. I'm dividing by x square throughout. I need to find just the ratio x is to a or a is to x. We cannot find a and x. So we'll create a quadratic in a by x and then try to simplify that. So now we're dealing with 2y square minus 2y minus 1. Zero. Solve this and then get to it. So we do say that the minus p plus or minus or completion of squares and then simplifying. Any method works fine. So we can write this as y square minus y minus 1 by 2 equal to 0. Or y square minus y. So x square minus 2ax plus a square. That's what we are looking for. So y square minus y plus 1 by 4. This is y minus 1 by 2, the whole square. equals 1 by 2 plus 1 by 4 or y minus 1 by 2 the whole square is 3 by 4 or I'm gonna write this down here y minus 1 by 2 is plus or minus root 3 by 2 or y is plus root 3 plus 1 by 2 or minus root 3 plus 1 by 2 this is not possible this is what we're looking for y we notice we had assumed y to be a by x or x by a is 2 by root 3 plus 1. we know x by a you can easily find out x square by a square and there you can find out root 3 by 4 x square by a square which is the ratio of equal triangle to that of the square doing this question explicitly without using trigonometry because sine 75 there's, there's no expectation of you to know sine 75 so don't worry about it if you happen to know sine 75 brilliant life is easy but without knowing sine 75 you can still answer this question okay again you will not get a question this difficult if you're trying to do a bunch of really tough questions so that we get an idea of how to approach these kind of questions where there's a square given or an equal triangle given or triangle inside a square square inside a triangle so get used to ideas of equal triangle and square and become very comfortable with them we're doing these tough questions to, to become more comfortable with the idea. This is not the benchmark of the type of question you can expect in the exam. 
exam question you should be able to nail this nail that question in about one and a half to two minutes and so this even if you found all the right approaches which you never had to pause to think even then this will take you three three and a half minutes so this is significantly tougher than what you'll see in the exam and it's very tough to get all the right ideas and even if you get all the right ideas it'll take a while to solve so this is not an example of an exam question but it's a very good question nonetheless Try this one, regular octagon. Oh, you should know everything about a regular hexagon that, that you should know. Longest diagonal, shortest diagonal, area. If you draw an inch circle, what will be the radius? If you draw a circumscribed inch circle, what will be the radius? What is the ratio of these two areas? All of that you should know. Octagon is probably one step further down the line, but no harm, give it a go. This is also good. A regular octagon is a shape which is an eight-sided figure where all sides are equal and all angles are equal. Probably uh, quite a few people might think that a regular polygon is a shape where all sides are equal. There are lots of hexagons apparently which can have all sides equal but not necessarily all angles equal. And so uh, for a long time I thought a regular polygon was something that had all sides equal which therefore meant all angles should be equal. Apparently that is not the case. And you can have polygons where all sides are equal, but all angles need not be equal. A regular polygon is one where all sides are equal and all angles are equal. And so an internal angle in a regular octagon, each internal angle will be 135 degrees, which makes each external angle 45 degrees. 45 degrees is a lovely angle. The moment you see a 60 or a 30, you should have flashlights going on in your mind saying, look, somewhere equal triangles are sitting inside and I need to worry about root 3 by 2. If you have a 45 degree angle mentioned somewhere, you're thinking straight away about isosceles right angle triangle, half of a square and 1 is to 1 is to root 2. So I, I kept saying that in, in geometry, you need to have markers placed in your mind to say, look, if I see this number, that bulb should go on in my brain. If I see this, I should be mapping this. Like um, the coolest thing around these days, the big data. And where you see some data point and some flash bulb should one. And so uh, you should be saying 45 degrees, there is a root 2 sitting here somewhere. 60 degrees, there's a root 3 by 2 sitting here somewhere. And I'll find that. Especially 45 degrees. A regular shape with 45 degrees in what can it be? There's going to be a bunch of isosceles right angle triangles lurking here and there. Dig them out see them, visualize them, have fun with them, and then you're done with this topic. Right? Longest diagonal to the shortest diagonal in the regular octagon. The cat is out of the bag and telling you clearly to look for squares and isosceles right angle triangles carved out of this regular octagon. And so keep that in mind, look for that. This is the best shape we could muster on a PowerPoint slide. This is, does not look completely like a regular octagon, but it's good practice. You shouldn't get conditioned to a good diagram. You should be comfortable with the slightly misleading diagrams. Right? So this is a regular octagon. What is the longest diagonal? What is the shortest diagonal? You should know that as well. All sides are A, 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 A. The longest diagonal would be vertically exactly opposite. So B, C, D, E, the fourth vertex. One, two, three, four. Fourth vertex, either way. That will be the longest diagonal. Shortest diagonal will be the second. So A, C, the shortest diagonal. A, E is the longest diagonal. I'm going to mark whatever I know so far. B, C is A, P, Q is A, Q, D is A by root 2. CQ is A by root 2, AP is A by root 2. Can I find AC? Have I got a route to finding AC? What is the ratio of longest diagonal to the shortest diagonal? Can I find AC? Can I find AE? Have you got the method? Have you know the, do you know the method? Crack the method, the mechanics will follow. You should do so much practice 
that the mechanics turn out to be good. But the first funda here is the method. I need to find AC, I need to find AE. AC is a wonderful hypotenuse of this triangle, CQA. This is 90. So if I know AQ and CQ through, do I know AQ? AQ is A by root 2 plus A. CQ is A by root 2. Done. Or we know that AC square is A by root 2 square plus A by root 2 plus A the whole square. How do I find AE? I know that AE square is AD square plus DE square. So AE square, AD square is A by root 2 plus A plus A by root 2 or A plus root 2 A whole square plus A square. I've got AC square in terms of A. I've got AE square in terms of A. I can find and compare these two squares, knock them off, and then take square root. I've got the answer. I want to find the ratio of the longest diagonal to the shortest diagonal in this. Right? So wonderful question. So think about it and then say how will you find this? You just need to find this, find this, then you're through. Right? So let's do this. AC square is A square by two plus A square by two plus a square plus 2a square by root 2. 2ab, two, 2 times a by root 2 into a. This is a into root 2 plus 1 whole square plus a square. That is a e square. This will be a square plus 2a square plus 2 root 2a square plus a square. This is a e square. This will be a square by 2 plus a square by 2 plus a square. This is 2a square plus 2a square by root 2. This is 4a square plus 2 root 2 a square. Just check out this ratio. This number is nothing but this into 2. This into 2. This. Or ae square is 2 times ac square. Or ae root 2 times AC. Wonderful question. Fabulous question. Uh, the key point here, Pythagoras theorem, 1 is to 1 is to root 2, you are home. Right. Keep that in mind. Anytime you see a 45 degree angle, what we learned from this question? Regular octagon, lots of squares and isosceles right angle triangles. Anytime squares and isosceles right angle triangle come, 1 is to 1 is to root 2, Pythagoras theorem. Anytime 45 degree angle is shown somewhere, I need to think about isosceles right angle triangles and squares. And so keep those markers in your mind and then you're through. Right? This ain't enough. We can do better than this. How do we do better than this? Think about this. Joint AC, joint C. Think about this. It's a wonderful way of looking at this question. AC and C will be equal. That much we know. That much we know straight away. So, a, B and B, C are equal. This is 135. So this is 22 and a half. This is 22 and a half. This is 22 and a half. 135 degrees. 22.5. 22.5. This angle is 22.5. Angle B, C, D is 135. What is this angle? This angle is 135 minus 45, 90 degrees. Or our wonderful triangle ACE, isosceles and right angle. So you could have said, Oh my god, this is fantastic. I have an isosceles right angle triangle, and I need to find the ratio of the hypotenuse to one side, root two is to one. I need to do none of this fancy shebang of Pythagoras theorem over multiple triangles. And a regular octagon carves itself out in many ways as squares and isosceles right angle triangles. It will look for those and then you'll be home and right. Wonderful question where you don't need to do any of this stuff about Pythagoras here. You can draw the diagonals and then first thing you notice the triangle ACE is isosceles. Then you think about it, ABC is isosceles, CDE is isosceles. So angle BCA, this wonderful angle here is half of 45. This wonderful angle here is half of 45. 
these two put together will be 45. Angle is 135, this is 90. The triangle we are thinking about, ACE, is not only isosceles, it is a right angle for good measure. We are looking for an isosceles right angle triangle. 1 is to 1 is to root 2, we just tuck the lottery. Wonderful question. And the regular octagon is a beautiful shape. A regular hexagon likewise, it's a wonderful shape. A regular hexagon is just six equilateral triangles placed around a point. You need to think about geometry in terms of equilateral triangles placed against, against a central point. Isosceles triangles and squares carved out to give us a bigger shape. Anytime I have 45 degrees, I need to think about one is root two. 60 or 30, I'm thinking one root three two, that triangle. So wherever possible, I'll plug in Pythagoras theorem. So you need to place those markers in your mind. So work on that, that is very vital. Oh, wonderful question, fabulous question. Try this one as well. Again, wonderful question. 20, 20, 30. I'm going to rush through this one because this is not that tough. And so, anytime you have an isosceles triangle, remember one thing you have an isosceles triangle, you're halfway there. Right? What do I mean by that? AB is 20, AC is 20, BC is 30. A, B, C, 20, 20, 30. I've not drawn the diagram really well. The 20s look longer than the 30s. We live with that. Isosceles triangle carves itself into two right angle triangles. Important point, simple point, crucial point. That means this will be 15, this will be 15. These two are congruent. You should know that straight away. You should know that straight away. And so find the altitude to side AC of the triangle. We need to find this altitude. We might know this altitude AD easily, but we want to find BE. And that's a tougher part, right? Forget about BE. We can find AD, let's find out AD. How do we find AD? AD square plus DC square equals AC square. So AD square plus 15 square equals 20 square. Or AD square equals 400 minus 225 is 175. Or AD is 5 root 7. Square root of 175. We carve out a 25 becomes 5 root 7. We don't need AD. We need PE. So we need to find some right angle triangle. This right angle triangle. Or the remaining right angle triangle. Either BEA or BEC. And then carve that out and find it. Or there is this wonderful method available for us. Just area of triangle ABC. Area of triangle ABC is half into BC into AD. Tellingly, it is also equal to half into AC into BE. Brilliant. We are through. BC into AD is AC into BE. 30 into 5 root 7 equals 20 into BE. Bang, bang, bang. Or BE equals 3 by 2 into 5 root 7. 7.5 root 7 or 15 by 2 root 7. And so you have a triangle where you know the three sides, you know one altitude, you know all three altitudes. 
area is common half into base into corresponding height you know one height you can find the other height in any isosceles triangle you can find that height from the unequal angle or to the unequal side to the base of the isosceles triangle that altitude you can find very easily once you find that you can find the other two as well let's jump to the next one in a tough one give this a go one of my favorite questions because there's a typical question where right? there's a street smart way of knowing this once you know the right numbers so try that i've probably given a big hint but try that Draw the right diagram, and then you are halfway there. I'm going to give you a starting step for this question, which has nothing to do with trapezium or or sides of the trapezium or area or parallelogram or nothing. We're going to go back to the right basics of right angle triangle, back to our favorite Pythagoras. Three, four, five. Is an iso is a right angle triangle. It's a Pythagorean triplet. Some of three three natural numbers which satisfy Pythagoras theorem is called a Pythagorean triplet. 5, 12, 13 is a Pythagorean triplet. 7, 24, 25 is a Pythagorean triplet. 9, 40, 41 is a Pythagorean triplet. 8, 15, 17 is one. There are infinitely many Pythagorean triplets. It can be easily proved. It's a wonderful idea. So there's general formula for different versions of Pythagorean triplets. I'm not saying there are infinitely many by saying 3, 4, 5, and then 6, 8, 10, and then 9, 12, 15. Obviously, like that, there are infinitely many. Multiply 3, 4, 5 by any natural number, you'll get another set of natural numbers. There are infinitely many independent Pythagorean triplets. A wonderful idea. And so that's also something, a property that Mr. Pythagoras found out, not someone following up on it. So, a very important idea. Why is it important? Suppose you see a triangle which has sides 60, 30, 34. If you look at this, it looks, looks funny. There's something special about these numbers 16, 30, 34. Somebody is creating a question as a 4 by 6, 10, 11, 12, 15, 17, 20, 15, 20, 25. Nice whole numbers, round numbers, close by numbers, nearby numbers. 16, 30, 30 foot. There for a reason. This is 8, 15, 17 into 2. Should immediately your antenna would, oh, oh my god, it's a right angle triangle. That should go up. And I'm giving you a very tangential method to crack this question because a wonderful question. If you draw the right diagram, it's answering this in seconds. It's a, it's a classic uh, men and boys question. The guys who know their triplets will look at this question, their eyes will light up. They'll bulge out and in 45 seconds they'll mark the answer and run away to the next one. I'm loading the pressure on you guys, especially those who have tried this question for more than 45 seconds. And I'm going to draw the diagram now. 40, 54. Non parallel sides. This is 40, this is 54, this is 15, this is 13. What am I going to do? I want to find the area of the trapezium. So I need the altitude. So I need this. Which is going to be equal to this. Let's say we talk about A, B, C, D, and P, Q. We know that there is a rectangle sitting here somewhere. A, B, Q, P is a rectangle. This is 40. This is X. This is 14 minus X. This is 54. 40 is gone. We have remaining. There is a 13 here, which is a hypotenuse. Maybe it is 5, 12, 13. This is 5. This is 12. Maybe. Or this could be 12. That could be 5. This is 12. This will be 12. This is 15. This is 12. This should be 9. 9 plus 5 is 14. Damn, this is your answer. Or area is half into sum of parallel side into altitude. Altitude is 12. Mark the answer. Bam! You go to the next one. If you look at this 13, you're through. There is a right angle triangle whose hypotenuse is 13. It need not be 5, 12, 13, but it could very well be 5, 12, 13. Bring it in. That we are playing an exam, a competitive exam. 
your, this exam has a lot of answers which are integers and rational numbers. It's an impossibly tough question to manually solve and figure out and get. But a delightfully simple question if you get this funda. This is a hypotenuse which is 13. Maybe it's 5, 12, 13. Let me give it a go. This is 12, this is 5, or this is 5, this is 12. 14 minus x. If this were 12, that will be 2, too small. And maybe we can put this as 5, that as 12. This is 12. 15 and 12. Ratio of 5 is to 4. This should be 3. 5, 4, 3 triangle it should be 9. 9 plus 5 is 14. That works. Or the two parallel sides are 40 and 54. Altitude is 12. Plug in the formula. You're done with the answer. Wonderful question because once you look at the 13 and say hypotenuse of 13 and getting somewhere here, you're through. Home and drive. So look for those Pythagorean triangles. Try this one. Again, a, a classic men and boys question. The guys who know the fundays, know their equal triangles inside out, will just answer this in seconds. And I want you guys to be to aspire to be that good. It's a question that you can answer in a minute or less than a minute if you know the right one. The shaded region is this one. I'm going to give you some time and then I'm going to rush through this first up. Just to say how the guys who are going to be on top of their game, what are they thinking like? The guys who solve this in 45 seconds, how they go berserk. Once they see this and they, they, they look at this question and say, bingo, I've got this here, I'm rushing through this, getting the answer. And I'm going to do it like that. And then we'll do it a slightly slower methodical way. And I'm going to give you a minute, minute and a half to just give this a go any which way. Super, let's set the timer and then go after this question. A regular hexagon, all sides A, 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 A. I'm going to assume A throughout. So the, in, the radius here is A, the equal triangle A, A. The long, the shortest diagonal is 3 units. So this is the shortest diagonal. This is root 3 A, that is 3, or A is root 3. The area of the shaded region, area of the circle, minus area of hexagon circle is pi a square minus six times root three by four a square divided by six that's the answer you're looking for you're going to plug a is root three pi into a square three pi minus six by four three by two into root three into three by six whichever answer choice comes closest that's what you're going like this so we go about it, bang, 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 bang. Wonderful question. I'm going to go over this slightly slower. Even the shortest diagonal is three units. Shortest diagonal is the, the diagonal from one vertex, the vertex sitting two vertices away. From E to A, the shortest diagonal. These two are A and A. This is 120. One is to one is to root three type triangle. Or you draw this line. This is 60. This is 30. Use some trigonometry root 3 by 2a, root 3 by 2a, add it up to root 3. The regular hexagon of side a, the shortest diagonal is root 3a, longest diagonal is 2a. You should just know this. The regular hexagon is just six equal triangles around the center point. So all of these will be equal triangles. So one equal triangle of side a is given, area is root 3 by 4 a square. Six of these will be this into six. The radius of the circumscribing circle will also be A. Area of that circle is pi A square. 
So pi a square area of circle minus 6 into root 3 by 4 a square area of hexagon will be area of all the part that are missed out. We want only this shaded region, which will be one sixth of that. There are going to be six segments, all equal, that are going to be part of the circle, but not part of the hexagon. So one sixth of this number is what you're looking for. We're looking for pi a square minus six root three by four a square pi six, then a is root three. Right? So you should know longest diagonal, shortest diagonal of regular hexagon. Uh, formula for each area of a circle, area of an equal triangle, area of a regular hexagon. Formula of a segment, which is sector minus triangle. In this case, it is circle minus regular hexagon divided by six. Then you're through. Once you look at this, you should be thinking equal triangles around a central point. You crack that, you're through. Again, a wonderful question. Give this a go. You can discover one particularly good funda here. So try this. This again is a very tough question, properly tough question with one very wonderful, beautiful funda. And I'm going to give that funda first and then we'll discuss this. Right? Uh, area of a triangle, we know area of a triangle is half into base into height. We also know this is the square root of S into S minus A into S minus B into S minus C. Where S is the semi perimeter and all that. This is also equal to RS, where R is the int radius. It's also equal to ABC by 4R. The capital R is a circum radius. This is also equal to half BC sin A or half AB sin C, half AC sin B, any which way you got this. So we're going to use this funda, especially this one. The other funda we're going to use is sin theta is equal to sin of 180 minus theta. Very regular stuff, no rocket science. Half into product of two sides and sine of the angle in between them. Is area of a triangle and sine of an angle is equal to sine of its supplement, sine of 180 minus theta. Right? How are we using all this in this question? We've been given AOB, BOC, COD areas, and we need to find area of triangle AOD. Forget about this. We're going to do a little bit of just the discussion on how we can go about this kind of question with a funda in between. Right? So, let AO be X. Let OB, I'm sure why. Let BC, Z. Let TO, I'm sure W. Area of this triangle, at this angle, theta. Area of this triangle is half XY sine theta. Area of this triangle is half WZ sine theta. Area of this triangle, half YZ sine of. 180 minus theta. This is theta. Tell me 180 minus theta. It will be half xw sine of 180 minus theta. 
Now we are in business. Sine of 180 minus theta is sine theta. Now this will be half xw sine theta. This will be half yz sine theta. Think about this. Given everything on a platter, half xw sine theta, half wz sine theta, half yz sine theta, half xy sine theta. X and W, Y and Z. X and Y, W and Z. If you combine this and this, we get X, Y, Z and W. If you combine this and this, we get W, X, Y and Z. Or we go to this delightful funda that area of triangle AOD into area of triangle BOC is equal to area of triangle AOB into area of triangle COD for any quadrilateral where O is the meeting point of the two diagonals AC and BD. Wonderful. Once you get this funda, we've established and proven this funda using little bit of trigonometry and the idea of formula for area of triangle using trigonometry. So if you get that, we want to find area of triangle AOD, this number area of triangle AOD into 15 equals 12 into 3, this is 4, 4, this is 16. Area of triangle AOD is 16. With this measure 16. You want to find the overall area. That will be 16 plus 12 plus 15 plus 20. 32 plus 31, which is 63. 28, 48, 63. Or in this measure, 63 square meters. Wonderful question. Uh, the idea here is important. You have any quadrilateral, you carve it up and break it into four triangles. The product of areas of opposite triangles will be equal. Triangle AOD's area into area of triangle BOC will be triangle AOB's area into area of triangle COD. So if you know three of those areas, you can find the fourth one. Why is that true? Why is that property hold good? Half AB sine C applied across all four triangles with that one additional funda, sine theta equals sine of 180 minus theta. If you know that, you have to. Right? I'm going to stop with that. I'm going to stop the screen, rattle on for a few seconds, and then we're done with the class. Wonderful. As ever, I quite enjoyed myself. A bunch of uh, a really tough questions. So this is uh, not been an easy session. Uh, unlikely that you'll get questions this tough. But these are uh, very good questions to practice in order to get comfortable with the idea of doing interesting and different questions on, uh, on, on geometry. Uh, equal triangles, isosceles right angle triangle, uh, uh, Pythagorean triplets. Those are those are fun days that you should uh, keep in your mind. Keep it right at the top of your mind. You should be able to pick a Pythagorean triplet from a distance. That funda is uh, very vital. So learn more with the, with the view to getting familiar and comfortable with, with the triplets and standard triangles and unequal triangles and, 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 and squares and isosceles right angle triangles. That part is important for the Super guys, all the best. Have fun. Have a good uh, weekend. What will the length of it?